Texas is on a drive to ensure teenagers don't have sex before marriage. When sex is being discussed, it's like, no, don't go there. We don't talk about that stuff. And if we do talk about it, we make sure that you know that you're not supposed to do it. When President Bush was governor of Texas, he brought in a law stating that sex education in schools must be based on abstinence. I would hear Christian teenagers say, I'm a technical virgin. <laughs> What's that? He just made you feel like if you held a guy's hand that you were a sinner. <laughs> yeah, I like Texas. Well, ain't it fine here? How easy is it for teenagers to resist temptation? I think it's extremely extremely hard. And once you are married, is sex worth waiting for? Last night we had sex, <laughs> so <laughs> finally. <laughs> George Bush has made Texas the model for the whole of America, but can he really expect all teenagers to wait till marriage to have sex? Good morning, Lubbock. You're listening to KJAC 92.7 FM, the spirit of the South Plains. This is the day which the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. May the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Welcome to Lubbock, West Texas, deep in the heart of the Bible Belt. It boasts that it has more churches per capita than anywhere else in the U.S. It also has the most fast food restaurants and the second largest one-story shopping mall in America and not much else. There's like four things you can do. It really stinks. Church is my favorite thing. <laughs> to add insult to injury, Lubbock's teenagers are expected not to have sex till they're married. In schools, the policy is only to teach abstinence. Nobody talks to teenagers about sex. Oh, no. Well, we... Yeah, go ahead. No one's ever, like, I've never had a class or, like, a lesson on, like, how to have sex or, no. like, how to use a condom or anything like that. We've never had... Or what happens during, during sex, sex or... No. What should happen? I never no. knew anything about We never that. had, like, the birds and the bees talk <laughs> with my parents. That never happened. Oh, no. Jay's 17. He's a party animal. The party, it's just quick, fast, and ridiculously hard fun. He loves women. Women do them fantastic. But in this devout Christian town, he's meant to keep away from them. You're in the Bible Belt of the US. Like, I'm talking about like most people, like probably around 80% of the people in the cities are in the church on Sunday morning. And so like, if we're sitting here getting preached to, saying, you know, you need to stay, um, you need to stay abstinent until you're married. And like, you get preached that every single Sunday. So it kind of becomes like, um, oh, what's the word like for com, I guess commonplace that you are just expected to stay a virgin until you get married. You'll be blessed. The Lord always blesses Whilst churches use the Bible, the schools use fear to keep teenagers away from sex. They kind of try to, I guess, scare us by doing like the talking about the gonorrhea and the AIDS and the HIV virus and, you know, syphilis and stuff like that. And they just kind of freak us out. So we will try to stay abstinent. Scare tactic. Yes. It's faggots. Is that what it is? Yes. At home, their parents support the no sex policy. They don't need to be giving them options or anything at that age, I don't think. So I'm real glad that they have that abstinence approach. The abstinence message is coming at them from all angles, but it goes against teenagers' natural urges. Jay has a novel way of trying to control himself. It's called stay out of the box, you know? You basically just like draw a line from like the shoulders, uh, like down sides and like across the middle of the thigh. And 
you stay out of the box. Like personally, I, I like a girl with a uh, with curves. Like you know, like I, I love that. Like that's awesome. Jay's going out for the night with his best friends, Brent and Clovis. We're going to a party. What's going to be going on at the party? Drinking. Drinking. A lot of Drinking, a lot having of sex, out. and smoking. And trying to pick up different women. You got to go find who's the finest women there. Like, you really do. Like, that's one of the first things you're looking for. Who are the finest women here, and do I have a chance with them? And then, like, once you get your beer, it, the game's on. Game is your skill at getting girls. I'm not very good at that. <laughs> well, not, well, not really getting girls, getting play. Uh, getting can't play, get, get is, play is messing around in any way with a girl. Even um, if it's just little smoochies. Yeah, though, even if it's just play. like making out with her or whatever, like that, that's still getting play. I mean, that's not getting a lot of play, but. Yeah. So there going to be sure. lots of ladies at the party? Hopefully. I hope there are plenty of um, fine females around. Here's the worst party, sausage fest. Yeah. Meaning all right, it's, when it's, it's, all it's guys, a lot of sausages. Guys. When it's all guys, you call terrible, it a sausage fest, Woodstock. Penis party. Uh, yeah, penis party. Can we say penis? You know, Jacob? Dude, seriously, I hope there's some fine women here. The party is downtown, and there's lots of underage drinking, which can get them in trouble with the police. With alcohol available and plenty of pretty girls, it's hard to resist temptation. It sounds really bad, but you're all doing something that you know that you shouldn't be doing. And there's always, of course, a couple girls and guys walking off into the back rooms. And then, like, you know, the ultimate guy trophy is, um, you know, if a guy can hook up with, with uh, more than one girl in a night. Jay, some uh, cops just drove by, man. Guys, some cops just drove by. We're out. Cops are no, 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 no bueno. See you, Megan, we're out. Uh, the, the cops just drove by, and so we need to leave. Cops are no, no because bueno. Because there's some underage drinking here, and uh, we don't need to be anywhere close to it, or else we could get in trouble. I'm only 17. I have tobacco and alcohol in my stomach. Let me tell y'all what it's like being male, middle class, and white. I guess some girls find me pretty, uh, pretty attractive or whatever. So it's it just makes it that much more hard, um, especially if the girl's not, uh, I guess, real strong in her walk with the Lord, and if she's a, uh, if she's uh, a little bit after it, like if she's. She's real promiscuous or whatever, like just to put it blunt. I mean, if she loves to screw around, then it's just, it makes it a real difficult thing to, to just straight up, you know, turn her down because that's so like openly presented that you're just like, oh, you know what I mean? Like you have a hard time to like turn her down. In Lubbock, that's exactly what they're expected to do and plenty of kids tow the party line. 15-year-old Eva is a big believer in abstinence till marriage. Sex is not about um, lust, but it's about love. To avoid temptation, Eva shuns parties. It's just like, oh, wrong places, wrong faces, wrong choices, you know? It's like, do I really want to put myself in that position? Instead, her social life revolves around the rock-solid youth church. <laughs> It's 6.15 and church starts at 6.30. I'm really worried that I'm gonna miss it. Like thousands of teenagers across Texas, Eva is planning to take a vow of abstinence. A purity pledge is to um, stay pure until you're married, which means um, not having intercourse. Does it only mean not intercourse? Um, it means I would consider Everything, like, beyond making out, <laughs> I guess you could say. What's making out? Um, OK, beyond kissing, yeah, I would consider 
that not pure. I've never done anything more than kissing in my life. And are you going to remain that way until you're married? Um, yeah. Tonight, 15-year-old Eva will pledge to remain a virgin until marriage. Her mum's taking her shopping for a purity ring at Lubbock's very own Christian department store. Most teenagers who make a purity pledge wear a ring on their wedding finger to symbolise their commitment to abstinence. Look at that one, the heart, and it says Jesus. See that? It says Jesus. I like I this probably, one. I like, uh, I like yeah, one. I like that. Wonderful. May I try on this, this one? Okay. I like that one. Buying the ring is making me realize that Eva's not a little anymore. She's not the 10 year old that, that was just five years ago. She's a young lady. I'm glad we're able to prevent ourselves from that conversation of do not have sex before marriage, be careful, or go okay. and take her down to the health department and get her birth control pills because that's not necessary in this case. The Purity Pledge Ceremony is conducted by Eva's pastor, Ed Ainsworth. He is the leading light of Lubbock's abstinence campaign and tells the kids that he stayed a virgin until marriage. Away by the blood of Jesus. Can I tell you something, young people? God has called you to purity. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 3, says to abstain from sexual immorality. For this, it says, for this is the will of God, abstain from sexual immorality. And anytime the Bible says this is the will of God, you uh, can't argue with that. Before they make the pledge, Ed sets out to show them why virginity is so important. His technique is somewhat unorthodox. Would you stick that in your mouth? No. Why not? <laughs> because it's disgusting. If you've had sex, Ed says you're like a used toothbrush. Number one, you don't know where they've been. Number two, you don't know what they've been doing. And number three, you don't know who they've been doing it with. <laughs> Right here, Jennifer. A toothbrush in a box. <laughs> no, ma'am. Jennifer is looking at a virgin toothbrush. <laughs> Do you know what makes this a virgin toothbrush? <laughs> Never been touched. It's pure. It's clean. It's free from sin. Taking a purity pledge is a huge commitment because you know you are doing this in front of lots of people. and. You can't mess up, which I know I won't. Do you think it's a big thing to expect a teenager to stick to, to not having... It is a big thing to stick to, because they're so... I mean, I'm just now starting high school. This is just now when all the temptations are starting, and I'm now making that decision. You mean temptation of boys? Yeah. On this purity pledge, there's a place for you to sign it, and there's a place for your parents to sign it. I want, to, I want to leave this place tonight knowing that I watched young people make a declaration that they're going to live a sexually pure life before God. It says I, and he gives your name, I covenant with God, my parents, my future marriage partner, to remain a virgin until the day I marry. I cannot do this on my own, so I commit to allow Christ to control my date life, and I commit to date only Christians who will encourage me in my walk with Jesus. Wondering days are over Or does it mean that I'm getting boring? You tell me I'm tired of listening to myself, yeah You know my bit popping days are over I hung my bits When you have it on paper, it's different than talking to somebody because only that one person hears it. But when you have that paper and show it in front of the whole congregation, it's a different example. No words can describe the impact that Pastor Ed has had on my life. I pretty much quote Ed on my day-to-day -day life. I know that when you lose your virginity, you also lose your dignity, you also lose your reputation. You also Ed Ainsworth has had an impact on a whole generation of kids. For 10 years, Lubbock schools have relied on him to teach abstinence. 
He makes a healthy living out of his used toothbrushes. Where they've been, what they've been doing, or who they've been I teach that sex in marriage is like fire in the fireplace. It'll keep you warm and make you feel good. Sex outside marriage is like fire in the middle of the floor. It's going to burn your house down and destroy your life, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and financially. You don't want to be there unless you're emotionally, physically, um, spiritually, financially able to go ahead and face the consequences of what you're doing because there's so many things that could happen. Is that an ad quote? Yeah, it is really the financially stuff that's an ad quote. We're going to have fun. You better check yourself before you wreck yourself. Because you know what? It is a chance you take. Man, I couldn't have planned it any better. Guess what it landed on? AIDS. I'd like to take their heart out and play with it and then put it back and let them know that if they make themselves vulnerable, if they take a risk with a condom, that condom will never protect their heart, it'll never protect their mind, it'll never protect their emotions. By law, Texan schools are not allowed to promote contraception, nor explain how to use it or where to get hold of it. But to scare teenagers away from sex altogether, Ed actually tells them that condoms don't work. Well, don't you think it's problematic telling kids things like condoms have holes in them because it's they're the not... Truth. Have you ever tried to blow up a condom? Sure. How could it blow up if it had holes in? Because it's a synthetic material. It is not, it is porous. It does not, uh, it, you blow one up and set it around and see if it deflates, it will. But it's a barrier. It's a barrier it's a for barrier what you need it to be a barrier is, for. It's a barrier, but it's not perfect. It is synthetic. It is made of fibers that are, that go both ways. Knowledge creates an ability to make good decisions. And I'm giving them accurate knowledge that they're not talking about on TV. Jason and Michelle have been together for two years. They're in love. They're the example of purity that Ed wants all kids to live up to. Wow, I've only kissed two guys in my whole lifetime. Soon they'll be allowed to do much more than kissing as they're about to get married. We have waited um, 20 years and 23 years to have sex, and so it's kind of a big deal for us. So this is kind of a monumental day in our lives. It's harder for a guy to um, not want part of that intimacy um, just because of, you know, guys, they think about it a lot more. Jason and Michelle have had to lay down some strict rules to ensure they don't get too carried away. Group situations are really good. That way you're not alone and, you know, like I said, you're not going to um, do anything in front of others. We don't turn all the lights off and sit on the couch and watch a movie. You know, it just, it creates an environment that is, it's just too tempting to let something happen. Okay. Donna Clary, five. Cecil Callen will not attend. Are you excited, Mum, for the wedding? Yes, we're real excited. We feel like this is the right thing and the right time. In our home, we have always taught, uh, along with the school, that abstinence is, is the is the choice that you, you, you're to make. We're blessed that the Lord has given her, you know, the strength and the, the courage to stand behind her convictions and what she know, knows is, is God's way. With all this pressure to stay pure, even the slightest indiscretions carry a lot of guilt. I don't feel 100% pure just because Jason and I have made up. You know, we haven't had sex, no, and we haven't, you know, done a lot of the the fondling and all the stuff like that. But to me, it, there are things that I wish that we wouldn't have done. I mean, how far did you actually go? Like, do you want to be, try and just be honest about it? I mean, did you, have you gone to oral sex or? No, no. <laughs> kind of, have you ever seen each other kind of down there area? No, Have you no. seen each other's sexual organs? No. Mm -hmm. Uh-uh. 
I guess you would say some some touching and things like that have gone on that uh, you know for us and just what we feel and what we believe is never should have happened. You know, there's times when I beat myself up over it, and I I remember that, and it's kind of like I, I just I relive the torture each time. <laughs> hard for Jason to control his ardour, he's relied on his friends to keep him in check. These guys have kind of been my uh, accountability partners and they've kind of kept me on the straight and narrow, so uh, they've kicked my butt, butt a few times when I've kind of <laughs> wondered, but uh, they've done a good job, so I appreciate it from them. So. We always talk about it and just make sure that he was doing the right things, making the right choices and talking about it afterwards so that he wasn't making any mistakes as he was going along. Have you all managed to stay sexually pure as well? Um, I had some problems, you know, I guess, in my in my own walk, but my wife managed to stay sexually pure. I'm 25, and my wife waited to have sex till she was 29. Were you nervous on your wedding night? Yes, extremely nervous. So it, it's tough, but you know, I mean, it's it's definitely rewarding, and it, it gets better. <laughs> Did you hear that, Jason? Yes. Uh, <laughs> I heard everything Louie said, and uh, I trust Louie. I know everything he's going to uh, tell me um, is, you know, will be beneficial. And so uh, uh, I guess I can kind of, you know, maybe learn from somebody else's experience, maybe even somebody else's mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> there were no mistakes. <laughs> no mistakes made. thing with the whole guys and the sex is it's kind of like a curse because guys were given two heads you know enough blood in their body to control one at a time there's like no way that you know like like when it starts to happen you know the blood starts to pumping your brain turns off and the other head turns on and you're in trouble teenagers have hormones teenage boys especially yes girls do too girls that, that is such a lot it Girls have get just as many hormones as guys. It is a proven except, fact. I don't know what keeps them under control, but me neither. For some reason, guys just don't have as no, good a control it, over them. But girls feel more. just the same see, way. I girls swear on it. Are just oh. like guys. They want it just as bad as we do. We just show it more. When their hormones are getting the better of them, Lubbock's teenagers are rather creative with their definition of purity. Like I feel much safer getting head from a girl, oral sex from a girl <laughs> than, 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 than like having sex with her because you know if like if I got some chick pregnant I'd be so dead. Oral sex is way more socially acceptable. Like um, a lot of people nowadays are not really uh, considering oral sex to be straight up like sex. Like they don't think of it as as being a bad thing. So as far as like a literal definition goes, then they still consider themselves uh, virgins. There's this prevalent thought in the United States of America that as long as you do, as long as you don't have sexual intercourse, you're still a virgin. Is that purity? No. You know what, I hear, I even hear Christian teenagers say, I'm a technical virgin. Here's what I teach them, is what you're doing with your boyfriend or girlfriend, would you be doing it in front of your father if he was watching? That's the line. I teach it very clearly. But it's not as clear as he thinks. The abstinence message confuses many kids who think that as long as they keep their virginity, anything goes. There are a lot of adolescents that are sexually active but do not consider it to be a, a, a sexual activity. Uh, and that sexual activity involves anal sex, rectal having rectal sex. And that's their form of birth control. So they consider themselves to still be virgins because they haven't had vaginal penetration. At age 15, the world of sexual activity couldn't be further from Eva's mind. She's absolutely committed to her purity pledge. 
We're so happy that she decided to do the pledge that we decided to have a little celebration here. I'm very happy that she took the pledge. But that doesn't mean if she didn't fulfill her pledge in the contract that we're going to disown her. I've got to, you know, let her. Why are you even discussing that when I already told you that this is something I would stick to? And if you believed in me like that, then you wouldn't even be questioning it or even thinking about the consequences of what would come if I didn't fulfill it. Oh, I know, but there's just something called being realistic. And there's I no sense in even having a pledge if it's something that's going to be okay if she doesn't fulfill it. Well, <laughs> I'm being realistic. If you knew me, you would know it was realistic that I would never go ahead and do that. I know, I know. But I just want her to know, as a parent, I love her no matter what. what not that I'm saying you're not going to fulfill the pledge. You know it's never going to happen, so why even bring it up? Okay, well, you feel that you'll definitely stick to it? Oh, I know I'll definitely stick to the pledge. It's not even an issue. Every week, over a thousand teenagers descend on the biggest church in Lubbock for a worship night called Paradigm. It's good, clean fun designed to provide an alternative to partying. They have loud Christian rock music, big screens, and even sell their own merchandise to the kids. This is Lubbock's answer to a pop concert. Seventeen-year-old Jay can be found here every week. He's desperately trying to be a good Christian, but constantly struggles with the urge to go to parties. You kind of get caught up in between the two worlds, like, because, you know, like, I love going to the parties, but you know I love uh, going to going to church and, and praising God and, and just giving Him all the glory and stuff like that. And uh, you know, that's every time you really make an awesome, awesome commitment to God, then of course you know uh, you know Satan's gonna give you this killer party, just slamming. That's just, you know, amazing. And that would be such a blast, and you'd talk about it for forever. But parties mean facing the temptation of girls. Jay took the purity pledge when he was 14, but he's found it hard to stick to. Yeah, it makes me feel bad that I've gone uh, further with, with girls than kissing. Basically, I, I felt like I'd betrayed... Um, you know, the commitments that I'd made to my God, that I'd said that I was gonna try and stay pure. Somewhere along the way, uh, I didn't, it wasn't as important to me. Do you think it was quite unrealistic to expect you to stay pure? No. I think that there, that it's not very unrealistic that, that I could've, I, I could've, you know, if I, if I was stronger, um, if I would have uh, stayed closer to God, I think it's extremely, extremely hard. But I don't think it's in any way impossible. He's going to make mistakes sometimes, but his faith is what gets him through that and not something else, then it's okay. You just, he's going to go through it, but how's he going to come out on the other side of the turmoil? Is it going to be that he's grown? And it, that he's um, learned something, or is it gonna be that he's got all these consequences because he chose the wrong thing? But what about the ones that have taken the pledge and then don't stick to it? Do you not think they end up feeling worse? They get to start over. Can you get back in your box? Can you get back in your box, young people? Yes. Can you start over? Yeah. Apparently you can. It's called secondary virginity. I'm gonna give them hope. If they listen to me, I will give them hope. Failure is never final. There is a chance to start over. You don't end up feeling worthless for having failed at that. 
Well, see, I, I, I think they, they ha end up having some baggage, yeah. But see that, see that again, you're proving my point. That why use a condom? Why have sex? Why give all this free love and free sex advice if out of your own mouth they're going to be carrying baggage? Because they've taken a pledge to say that they won't. I'm not saying everyone who has sex before marriage carries baggage. I'm saying if you take a pledge to say you won't and then you have sex, does that not give you baggage? Sure it does. Just like any time you know you've lied, gives you baggage. I see myself as a spiritual virgin. I know that I'll never be physically um, a virgin again. Vanessa is 18 and off to university. She lost her virginity a year ago. My parents gave me um, my purity ring for Valentine's Day um, my junior year, and um, I lost my virginity my junior year. Um, right after I got it. Vanessa partied her way through high school. I was becoming someone that I didn't want to become. Um, I had started to um, sleep around with other guys, not just my boyfriend. And at first I tried to change who I was by myself, but it's, so, it's such a big job. It was too big a job for me to do by myself and I had to hand it over to God. She now considers herself to be a secondary virgin. God's forgiven me for it, and my parents have forgiven me for it. It, it devastated me. Um, it really devastated me. Um, I cried a lot. Um, I was a little bit depressed. I, you know, I, I had a hope and a dream for her. We would have wanted her to be pure for her wedding day, because that's a precious gift to your husband. Sometimes you have to grieve your dreams that you had for your child, and that's hard. Vanessa's worried that university will be full of temptation and hopes her friend Ashley will keep her strong. There's going to be so much more temptations in college than there was even in high school, and that's why we have to be there for each other, to hold each other accountable. I'm not, I don't plan on going any further than kissing, and I'm going to definitely um, make that clear to the next guy that I get into a dating relationship with. And if he's not okay with that, then he doesn't need to be my boyfriend. <laughs> yeah. And that's another thing, like when we date people and when we try to find boys to date, that, that it's really important for their, like, for them to have the same standards that we have mm -hmm, in dating. Definitely. Yeah. To keep them focused on God rather than boys, Vanessa and Ashley go to pray with other Christian youngsters in the local park three evenings a week. I just thank you for your love and your faithfulness. And Father, I just ask that it would change our lives, God, and that, that we would take the focus off of ourselves and off of our petty problems. God, I just pray that you would teach us, that, that you would help us to understand what an awesome God we serve and that it would change our lives. I'm definitely trying very hard to um, be as strong, as strong as some of my friends are. I'm definitely still at the stage that I can still just uh, fall back down into what I was in before. Every year, thousands of teenagers fall off the purity wagon. Despite the push for abstinence, Lubbock has some of the highest rates of teenage pregnancy and sexually transmitted diseases in the whole of America. Eating good, buddy. We can't really be normal teenagers anymore. We are responsible parents. We have several moms that are teenagers. The baby's in our unit right now. So it's fairly, very common. What's up, big man? Uh, on my 18th birthday, I, I sure didn't think I'd be here on my 19th. Look at mama. Even though we felt guilty, we, I mean, we still always just got caught up in the moment and we loved each other and that's all we thought about. Do you think that kids aren't having sex and aren't taking those risks? Yeah. So how do you explain the STD rates and the teen pregnancy rates? And because books? there's some that aren't listening. Something's going very wrong in Lubbock. Although the authorities say they teach abstinence to protect the teenager's sexual health, it doesn't seem to be working. In Lubbock, um, the powers that be have been so resistant to comprehensive sex education um, to maintain a mask, to maintain a, a veneer of 
purity and wholesomeness. Um, you know, I work in the trenches of STD and HIV, and I, you know, and I, you don't have to look beneath that veneer very far before you find out that human beings in Lubbock like to have sex just as much as the human beings in the rest of the world. Um, and, and so I think it's a lot about uh, denial and, uh, and maintaining an image that really isn't true. The abstinence approach is the best approach there is out there because promoting promiscuity is promoting death in this day and age. Even if you're promoting safe sex. Even if you're, you can still die using a condom from an STD. What would you like to do to try and bring the high rate of STDs down in Lubbock? That scope of education needs to be broadened to where more than statistics and more than a blind study and more than us going in sometimes and being allowed to talk to STDs but not do condom demonstrations. But if you can't educate their parents, you can't get into the church to where they're having their youth rallies and their lock-ins and you can't do that, then your purpose is really defeated. Why do you think you're not allowed to into the churches and into the schools? Oh, because that's, the, that's where we are, the Bible Belt, and they teach morality. They teach you to sustain, you know, knowing that the body is, is, is flesh and it's weak. Eric Benson and his colleagues in the health department are trying to mop up the mess and protect teenagers from the most common STDs, gonorrhea and chlamydia. They do this by teaching safe sex to as many kids as they can outside school. One of the myths that I hear again and again in this community is that if we give comprehensive sex education to the kids, that we're encouraging them to have sex, which is the farthest thing from the truth. 16 years old. Today, Eric's been invited to talk to a group of kids who are considered to be at risk. Questions. Is there anything in there that didn't make crystal clear sense to you guys? Yes. Ed Ingsby told us at school that condoms don't always work. I had the same instructor, and he was saying that sometimes the latex is not, its mm -hmm. um, fibers are not close enough to. That's absolute balderdash. That's complete and absolute misinformation. Okay. I would also venture to say that I think that's scare tactics. Lone Star, where are you? With all the sexual confusion in Lubbock, those who have managed to stay virgins till marriage don't know what to think. Growing up, and especially in the school that I went to, sex was always a taboo subject, and it was always um, drilled into us that sex is bad, you know. And they tried to make it, you know, sex before marriage is bad, but it sometimes came across as sex in itself is bad. Think about if all the sex education that they ever got was based in fear and, and uh, myths and misinformation, then at some point they become an adult and they enter hopefully into you know, a, mar a marriage relationship or a lifelong partnership with somebody. And instead of enjoying a, a very necessary part of a lifelong union, sexual intimacy, they come into that relationship with a lot of fears and misunderstandings and hangups. And, uh, and I, I think that's terrible. So many kids were getting married and then, you know, they'd have sex and then they made themselves so nervous that they're sick or that, you know, they wake up and they just feel so dirty. Do you think you're ready to give the gift away? <laughs> I think I have to be ready now. The time has come. <laughs> so, yes, I'm a little nervous. After a lifetime of fear and mystery surrounding sex, Jason and Michelle are about to be let in on the big secret. And who better than the church pastor to spill the beans? Uh, are you pretty familiar with the men are microwaves, women are, are slow cookers? Uh, let's Texas churches offer a six-week course of premarital counseling, covering everything from finances to sexual fulfillment. Uh, but you'll notice in the sexual intensity uh, chart, women are definitely at a different uh, scale than men. And there's a difference in intensity and in time, and some of the tips for um, uh, 
cooking in the microwave uh, are basically, remember that men are physically oriented, are body-centered, get uh, excited quicker. Now, then the tips for the slow cooker <laughs> are a little bit different. Uh, remember that women are relational and need to be uh, emotionally needed, are slower to become excited, are easily distracted. Some say, well, you, you know, you need to have great understanding about how to have great sex life and all these kind of things. Relationship is a key. If you love each other, you work through everything. I think through these sessions especially, it has been very helpful to me and just, you know, understanding that it is a blessing and it is okay and it's, you know, everything's going to be all right. And so um, it definitely has helped me in that. The biggest thing is I'm, I'm worried that I'm going to do something wrong, <laughs> you know, and, and I don't want to hurt Michelle in any way. And I want to I want to make it enjoyable for her as it is for me. And so um, I'm just I'm just worried that it's not going to be that. And it's just going to be such a letdown for her. And, you know, I'll be, you know, fine and dandy, but she'll be, you know, OK, that was it. You know, <laughs> Jay is still wrestling with his own worries. He's trying hard to focus on church and hasn't been to a party for two weeks. It's a place of full consciousness where you aware, you remember, and you probably regret. People say a lot that uh, they feel like a service like directly spoke to them. It's like my exact situation, so it was kind of hard to deny. I know where I want to be now. Like, I've made my decision. Like, I'm going to go 100%. You know, there's no, I'm not going to go to parties and stuff like that just because I know that sooner or later I'm going to do something that I shouldn't be doing. I've been praying and, you know, just talking to God and, like, spending time with God and trying to live, like, a, like a godly life. It's really tough. Um, like, I don't know, you go through some serious, serious things that, uh, like, you don't expect, I guess. Like, things are really hard to stop once you start. Ladies, to me. I still do. What are you talking about? I love ladies. Women do. They're fantastic. Oh, man. What a love-hate thing. Um, Yeah, dude. Um, I used to struggle with that a lot, actually. It'll get easier, hopefully. I doubt it, but maybe. The wait is finally over for Jason and Michelle. I've heard um, some people say that sex is an act of worship, and because it is something that God has given you, um, I know a bunch of people have said, you know, that they got to their hotel room or whatever, and before they did anything, they just hit their knees in front of the bed and just, you know, said, God, we thank you for this day and the marriage, and to know that God delights in what you're doing is, is definitely a plus. I feel slightly embarrassed to think that's what I've heard people say that it's like the angels are up in heaven just rejoicing, you know, and to think that, you know, God and the angels are watching. Uh, but I know to them it's not something that they see as, oh, you know, wait, we shouldn't be watching that. You know, it's something that they see like, hey, great, you know. And I, I think that God's going to be sitting up there going, good job, you've waited. I know it's been tough at times, but I'm proud of you. And, you know, this is why you've waited. Enjoy it. And so I think, you know, uh, as long as I can get the middle picture out of my head of God watching us <laughs> in heaven. <laughs> The question, did you have sex last night? Yes, last night we had sex. <laughs> so, <laughs> finally. <laughs> and how did it go? 
It went great. Uh, I'm guessing sex was great, and so <laughs> I, I enjoyed myself. So <laughs> it was. I mean, I I was very nervous, but at the same time, um, you know, I think that it's you know now that I. I've done it. I can look at it and say it's probably one of the most natural things in the world. It's going to be one of those things that we spend a lifetime practicing and learning. And so it was good, though, for the first time. It's going to get better and better. Right. <laughs> I, I, I hope sex gets better and better. So. <laughs> did, you, did you feel guilty about it at all? You know, for so long is you tell yourself that, you know, if you look at a woman this way or if you do this or that, you know, it's wrong. You don't need to do it. And so for me, last night is... <clears throat> It was a little bit hard in kind of changing my thoughts and, you know, and changing those from I don't know how I felt when I was a kid. But I, I definitely I didn't feel like extreme guilt or anything. But it was just different. And so I had to realize in myself that um, everything that was going on was all right. So now when you go off on your honeymoon, will you just keep practicing? <laughs> <laughs> Um, I think that's Jason's plan. I hope to catch a few naps here and there. <laughs> I'm absolutely exhausted, but um, definitely. And, and I hope, you know, that it's not just a honeymoon thing. I hope it's a rest of our life thing. One couple has safely made it to marriage with their virginity intact, but Ed still has a lot of work to do. And then what's in my heart, God said to me tonight when I was praying, he said, you are to lay hands on those people that want boldness because I'm going to transfer the boldness, the confidence. That's why I'm bold, because I have confidence. Keeping Pastor Ed's words close to her heart, Eva is at the beginning of the long and arduous path of purity leading to marriage. In the name of Jesus, Father, that Eva, Lord, that she would rise up and stand, that her voice would count, Father. She cannot be silent in the name of Jesus. Someone who's been really close with her and has taught her a lot is the pastor, Ed. Ed has been real instrumental. So I owe a lot to Ed. But I'll always be grateful to the pastor and um, his wisdom. <laughs> Lord, she refuses to be silent, Father. Boldness, Father, in the name of Jesus. Boldness, Father, in the name of Jesus. Boldness, Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, boldness. Lord, they know the truth. How do you feel when you wake up in the morning now and see that ring? Um, it's just a symbol. Well, well, this morning when I woke up and looked at the ring, my finger was kind of bluish green. <laughs> I think it was because I, uh, I'm allergic to it, maybe. But uh, waking up and looking at that ring, if it wasn't silver, <laughs> would symbolize um, what being pure means to me. So does it give you a special feeling when you look at the ring? It does. It's like, this isn't my wedding ring, but it's good enough for now. <laughs> no. Texas is certainly no place to be having teenage sex. The abstinence movement ignores the reality of most teenagers' lives. But in Texas, no matter what the consequences, virginity pledges are here to stay. It's pretty tough to stick to it and keep my mind focused on it just because the world looks good. Like, the world looks fun and just, it looks like a blast. I don't think this is the end Cause it's just become my friend When it's done And all this is gone